I'm delighted to say I'm joined by one of the newest PDC tour card holders for 2021, Gordon Mavis. Thanks for the time again, Gordon. How are you doing? Yeah, pretty good, thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it's just all sort of sinking in at the moment, um, obviously, with what's happened the last couple of days. So a little bit of mixed emotions, though, with um, obviously with the family sort of not being here and, and not sort of going home when, when planned, but it is what it is, so we'll, we'll see how we go. I think when we're talking, I don't think it's been 24 hours yet since we had confirmation that you'd won a, a tour card at, at UKQ School. Has it sunk in yet, what you've achieved in Milton Keynes over the last two weeks? To be honest, no, it hasn't. I don't think it will until I'm sort of in that room with with those other 127 so-called professional dark players that I call myself now. So, um, yeah, I, I think it'll, it'll sink in sort of next Thursday when, when that sort of kicks off. Um, yeah, so try my best against the um, best in the world, mate. Definitely. Well, you had a, a big run on the penultimate day at Q School to the final, which put you right in contention to get that tour card. But when you went out in the last 64 yesterday on the final day, what was that wait like to find out that you'd done enough? Oh, yeah, it was pretty well, surreal because I thought I hadn't done enough yet. Um, I thought I still needed that one more, one more point to sort of secure the card. Um, but Obviously, with COVID, um, with the restrictions and stuff, as soon as you sort of were, were beaten, you sort of had to leave the venue. So I really had no idea um, what was happening. Um, I was just getting sort of messages from, from other people saying, oh, another dame just gone out and, and all that sort of stuff because I'm not, I'm not one to sort of sit on the Dark Connect um, platform and sort of watch it, so to speak. So I was sort of relying on other people sort of, relaying the messages um it was a long long three hours though so <laughs> yeah. as you can imagine obviously here in the uk we're, we're still in a lockdown a lot of restrictions in place so how did you try and celebrate your achievement yesterday you mentioned your, your family back home was it just calls back to them family and friends to chat to them yeah look the amount of messages and support i received like after was from back in oz from not just family obviously all friends and and foes as well um to congratulate me was, was quite overwhelming um obviously with the time difference it was uh, 2 a.m 3 a.m sort of time over there uh, and for them to be up um actually like watching us australians over here not just myself but james bailey and hope i as well um we we really appreciate the support and it, it drives us to to perform better, I think. So, thank you very much to everybody for coming. Come back to, to Q School a, a little bit later on, but when we had you on the show back in June last year, you were the first international qualifier confirmed for the PDC World Championships for that December. I remember when we spoke, the travel restrictions getting out of Australia, it was difficult back then. What were those months like in the build up to make sure that you were able to come over here to the UK to play? Yeah, just to get a, to, I just had to get a visa just to be sure to the, the government because we obviously had to get exemption to travel um, overseas. So I went through um, the process of actually getting a visa before I even committed um, to, to coming over, um, and then to get the actual um, to get the actual exemption was well, wasn't too bad in the end. So it was wasn't as painful as what I thought it was going to be uh, but obviously um, getting home is, is worse than sort of getting over here because our restrictions back in Australia are I mean like they're second to probably New Zealand with the amount of people in at the moment so that, that's been quite hard. Looking back, it was mid-November that you flew out from Brisbane to England. We know from your last World Championship, you mentioned you spoke about you brought your family over for it, a big family holiday. You made it a, a big occasion for yourselves. How hard was that lead up to Ali Pali this time round without them being there? It wasn't. It wasn't hard, so to speak, because I thought it was only going to be sort of for for those few months. And like I think I told you guys. In in June when we spoke, um, I, I really wanted to put the focus on on the World Championships on the second occasion. Um, obviously, it um, didn't turn out to be that case. I didn't sort of play that well, but it wasn't as hard um, as, as what, it, what, it, what I thought it would be. 
and straight after the, the World Championships, you said it's on to Q School now, getting ready for that. When we last spoke, you hadn't decided yet if you were going to give it a, a second go. So what persuaded you to have a, another crack at Q School? Simple, simple fact was my flight got cancelled on the 1st of February. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, um, I'd be... I'd be just coming out of my two-week quarantine back in Australia now uh, because I once they shifted the Q school from January um, into February, um, James and myself had decided that we were going to go home on the 1st of February. Um, so whether they say it's fate or not, I don't know, but I don't, I don't sort of believe in it. But um, you could say it was fate for Kenny here and here we are now. Um, to a card holder, professional dart player. So yeah. Wow, that definitely does sound like fate. And we we spoke on our show before Q School, the likes of yourself, Danny Baggish, James Bailey, making big sacrifices to play at Q School, spending so much time away from home. Was there a point you mentioned there the the flight getting cancelled? That may answer the question already. But was there a point when you considered not going to Q School, holding off until twenty twenty two when things are hopefully a little bit more normal? Or what kept you motivated to try and achieve that goal of getting the tour card? Uh, absolutely. Look, I, after my flight got cancelled, I I had a couple of different options. Um, I was one press of a button away from purchasing a ten thousand dollar Australian dollar business class seat one way back to Australia at one point. Um, so, yeah. To be honest, um, the main reason why I ended up deciding to stay was of my wife is so supportive back home um, to, to make me sort of try and follow the dream and also Simon Whitlock where I've obviously been staying here with him for the last four months his support and it has been like amazing like I couldn't thank him enough thank him enough for preparing me the way that I've played at Q school as well I wouldn't be in the position I am at the moment without him. Well, let's look a little bit closer back at Q School and two stages this year, different for the for the first time with that and the the first stage. How did you find that? Because you needed a run on the last day to get through to that final stage. How did you keep your cool? I guess going into that final day with with points needed to get through. Yeah, it, it was the first stage. I thought was it was more nerve wracking than sort of the second stage because obviously being an international player I was expected to sort of get through as well um, and didn't really have much of a good run uh, to be honest the guys that beat me on the first two days played really well and that, that happens in darts uh, but yeah like you said the third day I sort of I just thought look if I don't get a tour card um, if I don't get through the stage what's the worst that could happen I'm going to go home and see my family so I was sort of um, yeah I was in a win-win position and I just took the whole pressure off myself um, right through for the next the third day at one up stage 1A and then sort of the four, four days in the main stage I sort of was just thinking that the whole time like just to take the pressure off myself and obviously I had one, one really good day um, and that sort of got me through in the end. Yeah, what a run it was on the, the third day of the final stage. And I've, I've got to mention that semi-final against Louis Williams. 3-0, 4-1, 5-2 down, you win 6-5. How were you feeling then heading into the final, potentially one win away from getting that tour card? The way I played all day and the way I fought back in a couple of the other games as well, I was extremely confident that I was going to win the final. But um, I just I sort of started a bit, a bit cold. Um, I was playing as well as what I could, uh, but then I won sort of four legs in a row to go four three up. Um, but then yeah, just fell back in. I was just not consistent enough, and Jake Jake was just so consistent the whole time. Um, and then obviously um, come down to the last leg, and that bullseye um, that bullseye is a crucial thing at the start, and he had the walk and he did the business. So, yeah, I mean, following the, the scores on Dark Connect, it was a, a back and forth final. You mentioned a, f a few moments there, and the deciding leg, I think it was a 72 that he took out. You were sat on 48 to win the game. Heading back to your hotel room, 48 points potentially away from, from getting that tour card. Still a, a day to go. How were you feeling heading into that final day? I didn't sleep much, um, to be honest, that, that night, because I just kept thinking back, oh, what did I do wrong? And 
I beat myself up a, a little bit. Um, and then coming into the sort of the last day, I just I just thought I still needed one more point just to be sort of just to, to be really safe. Um, but look, beat Jamie Lewis, obviously the world championship quarter finalist and really really good player. Beat him first up and yeah, then Kev McDine just he took out loads of great doubles against me and wasn't to be and the long wait obviously. That run turned out to be enough. You're only the the fifth Australian to win a, a tour card at Q School. There's some big names on that list, and I know a few of them have been in touch, contacted you, congratulated you since then on getting your tour card. What does that support that you've had from your, your fellow pros and, and people like that mean to you? Yeah, it's a lot to get messages from Kyle back home. Obviously, um, the situation that he's in, him, his um, car, to get the messages from himself and and Damon. Um, Obviously, Simon's here here as well already. Um, it's it makes you feel it makes you feel like you they, you belong, sort of thing. If you know what I mean. But it's great, great support, great camaraderie between um, all the all the Australians. So it's really good. You mentioned Carl there. He recently announced that he's going to be staying in Australia. He spent seven years as a tour card holder. I know when we spoke, the plan for you was to move your family over potentially if you do get that tour card a, a big financial commitment now that you do have that tour card is that still the plan yeah that's that's always was the plan like, like i said when we spoke in, in june last year obviously it all comes down to that that financial commitment um which is is astronomical um it's not just the wife and one kid it's the wife and four kids so <laughs> um yeah just and at this at this time as well in the world with COVID, um, it's really really hard. Um, but I'm going to try try my best to um, make it work. And um, but who knows? I might have a couple of really good runs um, early on and get get some runs on the board. And uh, I'll be um, in there with with a shot anyway. So fingers crossed for that. Where you've played in a few world championships the world series you've seen up close michael van Gogh hit a 106 average against you on the stage how much are you relishing the opportunity to play the world's best maybe not week in week out at the moment with the schedule but all these opportunities that are going to come your way over the next two years at least yeah i'm i'm going to relish this chance and i'm going to try and take it with both hands um i've seen damon do what he did in in the 12 months that he's had a tour card and i I honestly, I've got the belief that I can do do the same sort of thing. Um, like I said before, I haven't, I haven't, each, um, but I've, you know, I um, just hold my own and give give um, the best in the world a run for their money. Like um, like Gerwin um, Price said, um, I'll try and pinch some pennies from yeah. the pros. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, before we let you go, yeah. you started playing. 1995, 1996. It was your dad that got you into the darts. 25 years later, you're now a, you know, on the professional circuit. That must mean so much that the highs and lows to get to where you are now. What are you hoping to get out of this next chapter of your career and and life? I guess. Oh look, I well, know. Look, the hard work only just begins now. So I'm going to sort of knuckle down. Um, I've got a, I've got a fair practice partner in, in Simon. So. He'll keep me. Um, he'll keep me grounded and keep my head in the right spot. Um, I, I guess the goal is to, to not not disgrace myself and and just be competitive. Um, at the end of the day, it's a game of darts. There's going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser. And hopefully, I'm on I'm on the winning side more than more than the losing side. Well, Gordon, congratulations again on winning your tour card. We're looking forward to seeing how you get on over the next few years and wish you all the best with 2021 and, and beyond. Not a problem. Thanks, thanks for having me on, guys. It's, uh, uh, it's an absolute pleasure.